Kafis, I'm bored. What plaything can you offer me today? An obscure game designer in the SK system, Your Majesty. The gamers refer to him as Sean Patrick Fannin. And with an intro like that, it can only be time for The Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Every week, we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse and to play a game with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is my co-host, Mike Kafis. Or Mike Claytis for today. <laughs> Mike Claytis, yes. <laughs> and our guest this week is Sean Patrick Fannin. Gordon's alive! <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it only seems like a couple days ago since we saw you. Uh, Sean has been professionally involved in tabletop RPGs, computer games, entertainment for over a quarter of a century. His projects have included Hero Games Champions product line, both West Ends and Fantasy Flight Star Wars RPGs, various World of Darkness books, the Savage Worlds epic high fantasy setting, Shanitar, and Savage Rifts for Pinnacle Entertainment Group for Evil, for Evil Beagle Games. His newest game is on Kickstarter right this second if you're watching right it live. Now. <laughs> right now, if you're watching this a couple weeks from now, it's it's not on there anymore, but you missed it. No, anyway, uh, Project Freedom Squadron, a Savage Worlds setting. Uh, make sure you go check that out. You can go right on Kickstarter. We'll put the link down in the notes uh, and just type in uh, Pro or Freedom Squadron. It'll come right up. It'll be the first thing. Oh, yeah. So, Sean, welcome back. It's, it's only been a few days since you were here. Yes, uh, I was uh, very, very uh, proud and pleased to be part of the launch of your Kickwits concept. And so yeah. we got a chance to talk a, a lot about the Kickstarter then. We delved into it. Definitely want to make sure that in all the notes that you put out, put the notes to that show because that was a very good show. We covered a lot of good yeah. stuff. Oh, it was. But, it was uh, a good show. We're cooking along. We're cooking along. It's looking good. We are just, I mean, like less than $300 shy of our next stretch goal. Uh, which is going to add a whole bunch of new uh, vocation frameworks into the core book. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes in after that. So it's all looking really, really good right now. Excellent. Good deal. Well, um, so we've had Sean on twice and, and uh, we have, uh, you know, talked about it. He had some really excellent Kickstarters. The last Kickstarter he had was, was uh, Riff for Savage Worlds, which was so insanely popular uh, and, and it's a really good looking book. Uh, and, and now he's got, um, he's got a, 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 I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, uh, Freedom Squadron. Freedom Squadron. I, keep, I keep wanting to call it Project Freedom and I know that's not it. Freedom Actually, Squadron. <laughs> Freedom Squadron is part of Project Awesome, which is all awesome. the great stuff from the 80s and 90s, you know, the giant transforming robots the cool you know flying around in space and gleaming winged armor and maybe some anthropomorphic animals shouting cool phrases while they hold up magic swords stuff like that you know stuff like that so yes <laughs> that's 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 where we're going these days but but we haven't had a chance to just hang out and talk and sean is he's been, he's been in the gaming world forever i mean like three decades now i think you've said right three 30, it's, it's, 30 years 2018 marks my 30th year in the industry right so he's seen a thing or two about a thing or two and uh and and Roger you even that. wrote a book a number of years ago uh and and this is like this is this book is now a history book it's, it's in history and it's a history book of gaming so <laughs> you know, like, everything up until now and then now went back there and now we're here um so so you've done a you know you've you've followed the history of gaming um mm -hmm. So I, I have some questions that that I think uh, I think our audience would like to, to know about uh, from from somebody who has really been paying attention to this. Um, so you know, it all started with back in the day with Blackmore and you know and Chainmail and Advanced Dungeons Dragons, and then you know there were some like Tecumol and and I think Traveler was one of the very early ones, and Champions was pretty early. Um, so so what? What were some of the, the other than everybody knows about D&D, &D, what were some of the other really big early games and like non-TSR games, like other companies that came out of this original uh, gaming movement? Wow. So, yeah, you're going all the way back to the beginning there. And uh, by the way, the book that you're referring to is called The Fantasy Role-Playing Gamers Bible. That's um, it, yes. And we published that in 95. We did an update to it in 99. But uh yeah and it's it, it, the, if you read through designers and uh, dragons uh, my book actually gets referenced a few times uh, as, a, as a background for that and people have asked me a lot of times so when are you going to do a new version and i'm like have you seen my schedule when right. am i going to write that <laughs> right. but you know it's it's a thing uh so a lot of people have to realize i mean i could tell you guys the story of the very first 
RPG experience, which is a uh, summer night, as I recall. I, I actually I can't tell you for sure what season it was anymore, but it was in 1967. Uh, it was based on a miniatures concept. So <clears throat> D&D really does get the credit for the thing that kind of launched, but there was some interesting parallel development going on. You had um, uh, Dr. Barker uh, was working on uh, his own sort of war gaming meets fantasy idea with the Empire of the Petal Throne. And he yes. didn't really have any solid rules, but he was trying to sort of construct something. But then he got his hands on what they were doing in the very earliest days of, of Dungeons and Dragons. And eventually that became a melded thing. They actually did an Empire of the Petal Thrones D&D driven kind of thing. But before that, he was playing with his own ideas. You uh, At the very beginning, you see um, uh, Tunnels and Trolls, which was a direct and fairly quick answer. To Dungeons and Dragons, and intentionally so. It was a lot of tongue in cheek. It was uh, there, bu uh, Buffalo, uh, F Flying Buffaloes, Flying Buffalo, yeah. uh, uh, Flying Buffalo, which they had already been doing lots of war games and cool games and stuff like that. But they were like, well, what, what happens if you play the monsters? You know, but they did. I mean, so that was the main thing was that we're the monsters being attacked in the dungeon. And it was very tongue in cheek and silly and a much easier, faster play kind of game. Um, then on the other side of that, the other thing that sort of popped up, uh, and uh, I think it was Games Workshop to the Google, he says as he's talking out loud. Because I don't, you, you hit me with some questions. I I, I was uh, <laughs> uh, I could actually, if I could go find a copy of my book right. on the well, shelf. And, uh, um, sorry, and, sorry and about I, that. And I could uh, I I could actually tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm just. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Trying to see who was the publisher of that one. But anyway, it was very, very early on. And we're talking uh, GDW. There it is. Okay. GDW. Oh, GDW. Yeah, yeah. yeah Fra Frank Chadwick and all those guys. Lauren, Lauren Wiseman. Uh, this was uh, 1975. So it's right in there. Oh, man. Right at the very beginning. Most people don't realize. I mean, this came like, parallel side by side. And it was a role-playing game. Of course, still very heavily influenced by wargaming concepts because everything was at that point. Um, but it was meant to be a uh, 17th and 18th century. Uh, you know, it, it really was just getting into the whole uh, sort of fantasy version, fantasized version of the politics of those of that era. Um, you know, with a sort of heavy emphasis on uh, you know swashbuckling three musketeers, Neil Flynn. Uh, but it was really complex because GDW at the time they were like, we do high simulation, you know, very intricate stuff. They do get some credit for bringing some social game mechanics into the process. That was something that you didn't have in anything else in those early games in the 70s was a, an emphasis on the social and political elements of gameplay. So On Guard gets a lot of credit for, for introducing that idea. So yeah. those, are your, those are your first three, you know, D&D, &D, uh, Totals and Trolls, and On Guard, uh, all, of course, dealing with swords and... You know, armor and and what have you. So, you know, those are those are the big ones. There, uh, we don't start seeing you know elements outside of fantasy until a couple of years later, um, when you start seeing Traveler, of course, you uh, right. Metamorphosis Alpha, which eventually sort of morphed into um, Gamma World. Um, right? Gamma Gamma World, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the you know TSR made a, a crack at uh, Wild West with Boot Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, they tried another one called Gangsters. I think it was called. Uh, gangbusters right or gangbusters right. Yeah, yeah gangbusters yeah. uh so they were trying some different genre stuff uh nothing ever quite hit for them quite in the same way that uh, that uh, D, D did uh but yeah so it's it, th those are your early your early start kind of stuff there was a an initial uh effort at superheroes before i think i'm not swearing to it, but i think before the the 70s were over i think we saw our first glimpse of superhero 2044 and I'm pretty sure we saw our earliest vision or earliest iterations of what would eventually become uh, Rune Quest and basic role playing out of Chaosium. So all of that's very much part of that early development of, of stuff coming along. And, well, and, yeah, Pete, I you, think we have it? found your. Oh. oh, he could crush me in that game. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I think we have found <laughs> your, your uh, best. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, we have a we have we have a game we play. Uh, it's, it's called Who Pub That, and and Mike will go down this list of role playing games, and he'll name them, and then I gotta I gotta tell him who published it, and he can't oh. use he can't use anything that is like super giant obscure by you know some whatever some like one little one off game that never really went anywhere. It's it's got to be something that was you know that was, was a viable game and uh, a viable market game that is. And um, but I, but you could I, I'm sure you could like destroy me in that game. I'm pretty good at it, but <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, Next, well, it, it, I, I, my met my my um, my head for uh, for dates isn't like what it used to be. It kind of gets right. a little cheesy. But if I knew that game was coming, you know. And by the way, I just confirmed uh, Super Hero Twenty Four was seventy seven. The original Rune Quest was seventy eight. So I was right. These were still. Wow. Uh, b- before the '80s, these were the games that were that were coming along. I mean, you have uh, '75 is when uh, Stafford for, does his first official game featuring the Galarantha world, which is White Bear and Red Moon. And then, as he saw the success of Dungeons and Dragons, he you know brought in some cool people, especially my friend Steve Perrin, and that was the initial development of uh, B- uh, basic role playing, which also has an important role because basic role playing is identifiably the first multi-genre role-playing system designed specifically to handle multiple genres and it wasn't originally thought of that way but it it very quickly evolved into that so that's that's wild so what do you what do you think what do you think the reason uh dungeons and dragons I mean, just just obviously it's just your opinion but, but what do you, why do you think dungeons and dragons was like is, is still to this day like the the big you know gorilla there's all these other games coming out uh some people would argue that there were games that came out that were better I mean, in their opinion, I mean, you know, I'm of the opinion that there's, you can't really say one game is better than another. You know, it's, it's all personal preference, um, except for, uh, what the hell is that game? Fatal? Yeah, that game sucks. Yeah, there's but, nothing good that can be said about Fatal. Uh, right? anybody, anybody who tries, I'm sorry, you're objectively, scientifically proven to be wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're, just, you're just, I don't like to say a game sucks, right? Because they're all good in their own way, except Fatal. Fatal sucks, and there's nothing good can yeah. be said about there, it. There's a, there's a few others that go in that category, and that's another show for another time. I right, think. yeah, yeah, that's uh, fine. That's fine. So it's got some Fatal think- Falls. It but, oh it 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 is it exists that's its fatal flaw. <laughs> so so Dungeons and Dragons um and I've 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 been asked this before and there's so many pat answers but the truth of the matter is marketing marketing and marketing um you know being first did not hurt but being first to market isn't always the best because somebody else can come along with an improvement that kicks you right between the 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 nether regions. And everybody goes, ooh, so that was kind of cool, but, you know, uh, whatever. If their first efforts, if they just sat on their laurels and kept sending out their mimeographs and their, you know, cheap, cheesy whatevers, then they were dead. And mm-hmm. a GDW is going to come along or an Avalon Hill. If, if they had not got the ball rolling and stayed on top of it right off the bat with the marketing of the time, then, then Avalon Hill would have actually eaten their, totally eaten their lunch because Avalon Hill was like, wait, wait a minute, what's going on over here? And they tried to bring something to market and then, and it didn't work out, but they would have because Avalon Hill was a much more established game company in that era. So Avalon Hill could have eaten their lunch. Uh, you know, any number of other companies could have come along had they sort of had they been a little bit faster on the uptake on you know this this weird new thing happening. But to his credit, now a lot of argument can be had about you know was it Gygax or was it Arneson or was right. it Wesley or was it any of those other guys in terms of the design and the creativity and 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 they all get credit but Gary Gygax to his credit really gets an enormous amount I just saw what you pulled off the shelf and did you, you see pulled, that you pulled the example I was about to uh, that I was invoking uh <laughs> there there it is Dragon Quest right that was the yeah. game that would have eaten Dungeons and Dragons lunch had Gary and and his people not basically in his basement and on his front porch, busting their ass, doing mailers, uh, using all of the context that Gary had developed in the war game and hobby industry to get them talking and to get you know it, he, I've totally got to give him credit on that. And then of course he realized he didn't have all the money he needed to put into that effort, which is where right. the Bloom Brothers eventually come in, and that eventually right. sets him up for the, the Night of the, the Long fall. Knives and everything yeah. else. But right. early on, that infusion of capital, that was spent as much, if not more, on marketing and promotion and advertising as it was on product development and, and, and actual publishing. And that was the right move because that kept 
Dungeons and Dragons, the name and Dungeons and Dragons, the imagery front and center, no matter what anybody else was doing. Right. So D Dungeons and Dragons became the Kleenex or the, the, uh, the Coke mm -hmm. of, yeah, I you. <laughs> of, of role-playing games. You could not talk about role-playing games and not say Dungeons and Dragons to this day, 30 years later, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not talking about right here today on March 19th. Yep. Uh, I'm walking down the street. You know, I, go, I walk every day uh, to you know, kind of get myself healthy. And my neighbors, uh, you know, they're all real. This is a really great neighborhood. But I hadn't talked to this one guy. We get to t he stops me. We get to chatting. And he asks me what I do. And I explain I design tabletop role playing games for a living. And he kind of gives me that weird, you know, beagle, <laughs> beagle head cock that they always yeah. give you. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, like Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, 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 oh. So, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we do. Is, Within the first year of of and and there's a sideline of they were going to call it the fantasy game uh, and and he told me it was his daughter he told other people it was his wife one of those two people in his life pulled you know said to Gary that's stupid you have dungeons and you have dragons call it that you know so either way he told the story it was one of the you know, one of the women in his life who had told him to change it to Dungeons and Dragons. Either way, that's that getting that name and establishing that branding. I just I cannot say enough about how important branding oh, in yeah. any in any industry is, but especially in one as niche as ours. Yeah. It's just mm -hmm. it's 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 vital, right? So that's why that is why they understood within the first year and they threw money and effort and energy at the branding and the establishment of Dungeons and Dragons as that game, that new awesome game, that was the game you wanted to play. That was, if you were going to do this new role-playing game thing, that was the game. Anybody else's efforts were second run, and you know, they were kind of ruthless about it. The game you just held up, yeah. um, they, by the time it, it, so the the, can see it, by the time it came out, um, you know, they were just slaughtering it in the marketplace, right? And then there was another game that another company, SPI, which was another heavily established uh, um, uh, war game publisher at the time. They tried to put one out, and I'd have to research. I had to go back and look at my book to remember what it was. But it was I don't remember the name. But they tried to bring it out, and anyway, they, they, it ended up sinking them financially. They put too much money into it. They tried, and then TSR came along and said, we'll bail you out, but we want that. So basically, they bought SPI's RPG and then shelved it. And they it had, never, it SPI never saw had a they had a couple of them. They had um, one of the games they had that I really liked, and it may be the one you're talking about, but when, uh, you know, because I've been playing since 80, uh, they had one called Universe, and I really liked Universe. I thought Universe that, was an excellent that, game. That wasn't it, actually. Okay. Uh, well, I know Dra Dragon Quest, this does have the SPI logo on it, so this may okay, be so the that one. Okay, so that was the one. Okay. Yeah, that was one. So it was SPI, so I can't remember. What, actually, it was Avalon Hill. Uh, I don't remember which one. It was Evelyn Hill. I knew it was Dra Dragon Quest was one of the two games, and I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm mixing and I'm mixing up my uh, my memory. But yeah, Avalon Hill <laughs> tried to put something out, yeah. and it, and and it was them that basically was like they came too little, too late, and it was right. too warty. And at that point, a dis you know, against Dave Wesley's wishes, the concept of role playing and role immersion was really taking hold. Uh, right. He was very. He was not a fan of it. He's the guy who invented it. To to to, to for all intents and purposes, Dave Wesley is the guy who invented the concept of the non-zero sum refereed game in which you have a single entity represented by your miniature instead of like an abstract unit, and that entity has goals and ideas and it has a profile and you embody that character. And he right. liked when he played the Blackmore stuff with Arneson. But when they started referring to it as role playing, to him, that was that frou frou Hollywood crap, or that frou frou <laughs> get get in, get in touch with your feelings crap. That's what role playing was about, and he hated the phrase. He hated it. Right. I'm not, I interviewed the man. I'm telling you, that's what he said. You know, well, it, I, go ahead, Mike. Oh, I was going to say that I guess in in a way, getting back to just D and D, and you know, they put their time in, and you said they put in the work, and I guess in a way, they still deserve it because they have taken the beating you know what i mean they've take they've been the whipping post they've been you know the the they fought the good fight so i guess in, in a way they earned it however they're crying I don't all know the way much. to the bank, they're crying yeah. all the way to the bank yeah i know yeah. i know but i just i what i don't what i'm not sure of is and what was that game you were holding up again p dragon what dragon now? quest okay dragon quest. so is this is it i'm asking a question similar to like beta max versus you know, uh, VHS, where Betamax was actually better, but VHS won out. Was Dragon Quest, was it a better system? 
uh, and and this is opinionative, uh, but yeah. what is the what is your thought? There, there are people who thought that it was a better game. Uh, now they 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 just were. There was a huge thing about that, and and the people who thought it was a better game were the ones who absolutely pitched an unmitigated fit when the whole situation where they got into some financial trouble. TSR comes along and says, "Hey, you know." Uh, We'd like to we'd like to help you out, but here's what we're gonna do. By the way, uh, powers and perils and lords of creation. Powers those and perils. The, I played that. Those were the those were the Avalon Hill attempts, but again, they were just too little, too late at that point. Mm. Um, but now, you know, there are people who who thought that that was a great game, but there's a lot of people who kind of look back through the the lens of nostalgia and feel one way, but then there's genuine critics uh, who who look at and establish, now, you know, what it was an interesting attempt, but it wasn't going to be a game changer, right? It right. was just, there was nothing in the system that was innovative enough and, and dramatically different enough that it was going to suddenly go, Oh my God, this is such a much better way to play the game. It just, it didn't do enough to, to be different from D and D. I mean, it was different, but it just, there wasn't that magic. Oh wait, here's what D and D is missing. And this makes it 10 times better. Yeah, and no. at that point you would have had to have had that. Right, right. You, just absolutely, you, you know, uh, you you would have had to had that, or you would have had to had the oh my god, sexy that World of Darkness eventually came along with. Yeah. Which, by the way, is why World of Darkness and and White Wolf was one of the first companies to ever seriously challenge, uh, at the time, Wizards of the Coast, uh, in any significant way. Right. Uh, yeah, we the, we've... they own the top slot uh, more often than any other not D and D company. So that was that's a thing for them. I've always felt. Now, what do you what do you think of this? Uh, and I don't have numbers to back this up. This is just personal like observation. But I felt I, I've always felt that Vampire was the game that actually um, was very encouraging to bring women, more women, into the hobby. And I, I think I think that I, I mean it, I, I don't know if it was just more appealing or or what, but it just seemed like it did. Vampire changed the demographics. There's no question about that. It absolutely did, and. It's it is a disservice to the women players who joined us at that time to oversimplify that. Okay, it's it's not like oh well it's romantic and sexy and that's why the women want to play. That's a gross oversimplification that I've heard used too too many times. So I, I want to address that. But but it is fair to say, and it wasn't just women, right? There were there were people of of all genre of all gender and sexual identity and 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 anything else that could not disassociate the war gamey roots of a Dungeons and Dragons. They were like, I, I want a certain style of play. I want more cinematic immersion or more literary immersion. I want to experience something on, a, on, a, on an emotional level that isn't just, uh, that poor orc, uh, I need his gold, so he dies, and give me that <laughs> right, box. Yeah. You know, and, and, I, and that's that's also a gross oversimplification. To their credit, there was a lot of really great stories that you could tell playing Dungeons & Dragons. So I, 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 I said that to be funny, but, you know, you could do lots of fun and amazing things. You know, there were great stories to be told in D&D, but the style of play and the interface, and, and I, I refer to the rules, the actual game engine of a game as its interface. That's the, the way that you interface with the world, the way you interface with the experience yeah. is through the game engine, through the rules. And to their credit, White Wolf designed a set of rules that created a different kind of interface, one that was more fluid and one that spoke in a different way to a certain audience. That audience included a lot more female players and a lot of players who had just a different attitude and a different idea and a different interest. You know, combine that with the interest at the time in Anne Rice's works uh, and the idea of, of a modern day sexy but nefarious and dangerous vampire with the crazy politics and you know going on. All of that just was a completely different animal that did something that no one that I that no one effectively, if they may have actually tried, but no one effectively touched into that the way that White Wolf did. And combine that with them very early on tapping into the burgeoning interest in LARPs outside of hitting people with foam swords, right. the right. parlor LARP idea. They took what was a, a little tiny idea that was just kind of bubbling up in different locations, mostly uh, sort of like higher level urban centers. They grabbed that concept. They did the, the, the mind's eye theater thing as a sideline and it just blew up. So suddenly right. you've had legitimate reason to dress, you know, sexy or, or, 
or over the top goth or whatever, or, you know, don't goth cosplay at all. Hey, vampires are supposed to be for hiding. So I'm going to wear my t-shirt and my jeans and that's, I'm still cosplaying, you know, so they could do that. You know, they're not running around in the woods hitting each other with buffer swords. They're at a hotel or that a cool, somebody's cool house or whatever. And they're, they're immersing narratively and emotionally at a level that the D and D experience didn't, quite go in the same direction for them so it was innovative across the board yeah and i think it was great i, I really do when, when vampire came out i was bl i was blown away myself you know because i've been role-playing since yeah. the 80s and uh and then vampire came along and we sat down and and it was our buddy john brings uh he's he's our our resident game guy who does most of the game mastering so he he pulls out this vampire book i'd never heard of it and uh, he's like, we're going to play vampires. Like, oh, that sounds cool, right? So we started playing. I was just like, oh, my God, this is like a totally different thing. It was it just just the way that the game is made. I mean, yeah, you could play it with just the mechanics of it. But, I mean, just the, the whole feel of it is built into the system and, and the yeah. setting. And it just, I was like, I was blown away. I was like, oh, my God, this is really, really cool. And it was, it was refreshing. Uh, very, very refreshing to play that. And the funny thing is, just personally, I'm not a fan of the of the storyteller system. That it's just right. the mechanics do not appeal to me personally. But damned if I don't respect what they did. Holy crap! Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah, it was good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So uh, before we get off this topic, because we got a few, I want to just like just a couple more minutes on this topic because we got another topic to talk about. Um, so what do you what do you think about today? Modern games today. Like what what is really uh, what's exciting about what's going on? Or what you know, what, what's kind of trending in modern games today? The different, because I mean, there's still you know people are still playing D and D, and there's a big old school revival, and that that's cool. We, but we already know about, you know, we already we just talked about all that. But what is cool about today's games that that is that is new to you? So, I have been developing my own personal design aesthetic uh, over the years. You know, having been crawling along with this thing since since well, you know, eighty eight. And actually, I started playing in 77. So I was there right when the first box sets and everything were coming out. Um, and, and I am hugely attracted to what I see as, you see, let me back up. There's the narrative and, and what we, people like to call either the indie game scene or the story game scene. And uh, you, you, you have the, the primary big name games that are part of that, which is Fate and Apocalypse, or Powered by the Apocalypse or the Apocalypse World Engine. Those are the two big, big ones. And then there's a lot of more interesting, you know, very specialized kinds of games that go into that. And I love the idea of those games. I love the idea of player-empowered uh, narrative. Uh, something Jeff D. apparently says, that's all well and good, but it's not role-playing. And we've had some serious arguments about that, actually. Mm. Um, but I think I say it is role playing. It is a role playing game. It's just a different kind of role playing game, and it's a wonderful idea. I have yet to have personally a positive experience as a player with either Fate or Apocalypse World Engine. It taps into a way of thinking that I have not been able to grok. Now that's not saying I wouldn't be able to. It just I think I need the right game master and the right situation in which to have that experience and get that. And I'd like to, I really would. That's a yeah, Sean better fan announcing yet again, somebody who wants to run a fate or a Pocos world engine game at a time when I have some time to play, I'll sit down and try it again. Cause I want to give it a fair shot, but there are elements of those types of games that I have heard, not just from myself, but many, many players who are like, I want to love this. It appeals to me imaginatively and intellectually, but the actual, the interface again, that, that interface, that, what is the emotional experience of you know what I'm the decisions I make and how I make those decisions and how those how do I affect the game world through the engine of the mechanics, and and those games do so in a way that is absolutely disconnected from what I'm used to, and mm -hmm. so it's 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 a comfort thing, right? So one of the things that um, I, I'm very excited to see happening right now, you said today, like right now. Right and I'm actually consider myself part of this effort. This motion yeah. is to take uh, what people would like to call trad game, uh, you know, traditional gaming, you know, taking more comfortable uh, or at least established as comfortable uh, interface, right? You know, I have a character sheet and here's my stats. And when I want to do something, I roll these dice and the, and, and my stats kind of help decide what happens. Taking that, 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 that comfortable interface that, and it's been reinforced, right? It's not just old gaming stuff. It's reinforced dramatically in in uh, in computer games and video games, right? We have characters, and so they have cool abilities and stats. We we level them up or make them more powerful. We we know that we understand that as a culture. So I still want to take that idea 
but I want to marry it. And I, I, there are other designers that are working on marrying the idea of the indie game, player driven narrative, player empowered experiences, shared storytelling, mo melding those into uh, a, an experience that 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 takes the best of both worlds. And creates an, a, a thing you know, with that. So cheap pitch. It's one of the reasons why uh, I did the, the plans and operations rules and some other things that I did with Freedom Squadron is to take a straight up, I got a character with a gun and cool abilities and his savage worlds and I roll my dice and I do stuff, but I married it to a, here, there's a situation you're facing. Uh, you know, here's, here's the actual mechanics. Now tell me a story about how you you solve that right. and we're right. seeing that evolve we're seeing that idea evolve which we're getting away from this one zero or you know i'm right you're wrong you know kind of attitude of it's this way and your way is wrong and right. getting back to let's take all the best ideas and create something cool and interesting that combines you know i have a character and i know what i'm doing and the gm runs the game and they make decisions too but we have means and methods and mechanisms to to work together towards a satisfying and entertaining experience. That is that is what I see as this current era, you know, the, the 21st century of game development, basically. And yeah. and um, I'm glad you brought it up because if you didn't bring it up, uh, plans and operations, I was going to. But the other thing I'll just add to that is that I think something magical that you did with plans and operations, especially just that that dynamic, is make it collaborative, make it so that a group can accomplish one player's goal. You know, hey, we need to accomplish this, and I'm the player that has this uh, ability, but all of us can kind of pitch in and and support you. And that, I think, is uh, not... Uh, I think that's innovative. That's not iterative. You know, that's uh, in... in in yeah what i said well, well thank <laughs> you uh i was when i was talking to the um the 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 on the shoulders of dwarves guys actually there's the, one of them is a huge fate guy right that's his thing mm -hmm. he actually said and it was a huge compliment i was like very moved by he said i've been looking at what you did with this i want to port this into fate when someone is wanting to take my mm -hmm. mechanic that was inspired by the ideas of fate but he wants to take my mechanic and bring that into his fate game that tells me i have managed to accomplish something that helps build upon those ideas and involve them to a new level that's very exciting for me very mm -hmm. exciting indeed so thank you for yeah. that cool. yeah and I, I you know it for me i'm like like you i'm like an old gamer i'm, I'm old you know i'm a mechanics gearhead i love I love mechanics, I, you know, and I'm not going to apologize for it. I love them. Maybe I'm a little Character bit of a word. Right. <laughs> right. We still love those. And and I might be a little bit of a you know a war gamer at heart. I have some war gaming like now not so Jonathan's in the chat room and he's going to be like yeah. that's not war gaming that's figure battles or whatever. <laughs> but whatever. Now I like 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 when I go to a convention, one of the games I try and play every single time that I go there is. Um, I keep wanting to call it Battle Droids, uh, BattleTech, because I, I played the original Battle Droids. I played Battle Droids back in the day. Yes. Yeah, so I love BattleTech. I love Car Wars. I just bought myself a copy of Car. I got my own car, copy of Car Wars now. Um, but I do like I do like the storytelling stuff. And and when we have um, so we have another show on the TSR Podcast Network called uh, Game School, which we're getting ready to start back up in June. Where we bring on designers. We'll have to have you on. Sean, uh, the designer comes on and describes the mechanics and the game itself, talks about how to make a character. That's half the show. And then the other half is you play a short demo to show the list, the, the, the listeners exactly what we just did. So they get an example. And it's a lot of fun. And uh, But I love hearing about mechanics. I'm, I'm, I'm like crazy about mechanics. But we, I think we played a Power by the Apocalypse game, and we did a, um, uh, a, a I think it was Bryce Whitaker's his name. He has a game called uh, Baker Street, which is a is one of the oh, best yeah, clue yeah. systems I've ever seen. That was cool, like a, like an investigation clue type system. But he I want to try that game sometime. I really do. Oh yeah, it's cool. He's but he did say that the one problem he has with that game is that. To, to, to run it properly, the adventures have to be very scripted. So, like, you don't – like, doing long campaigns would, would kill a DM because they would just have to, like – they would have to be writing constantly. They'd have to be almost a, an amateur, you know, author in, in, that, yep. in that way. Yep, yep. But – but anyway, all right. So, so unless unless you have any final words on the game thing, I, I got I, I got uh, we got a discussion point that we want to hit on because Mike, I, we popped, we broke Mike's tree. Oh, we oh we do want to talk about one more thing, uh, uh, keeping gaming inclusive, right? We want to yes, promote yes, that. Yes, yes. So I'm a big fan of that, uh, and and uh, you know, there's there's as you and I talked about off screen, 
uh, there are people who try to make this political and try to make it some sort of antagonistic experience. Like, why are you attacking me? I'm not, I'm not attacking anybody. I want everyone to be included. I want everyone to feel welcome. My, my, my admonition to those guys is so should you, right? Mm -hmm, so this yeah. is not about trying to take anything away from anybody. Uh, but let's face it. We're three white guys. This, this hobby has been ours from the beginning, right? Sure. We've never, we've never been excluded unless we were independently a jerk or, you know, or mm -hmm. cheated or something like that. But we automatically had a gateway in and, and, and we could talk about the greater, grander idea of, a, of, of political privilege, but I don't want to get in that, but I'm going to say in, in this hobby, it was a bunch of you know older white guys that started it. And it's, you know, been a lot of us, been the ones writing, I know, that, I, that that's my thing that's why i've lately been very actively trying to find other people and other voices to add to Eve beagle's roster of people doing and creating stuff and i'm a huge fan of the loyal santa's uh new agenda gaming project that he just launched uh which is very specifically about you know, people of color and people of different voices being involved in creating and bringing those voices out this is not about trying to take away somebody else's voice but i'm sorry you have plenty of channels where your voice is going to get heard. Let's open it up more to these other voices and start giving them a chance to be heard. If, if nothing else, Black Panther shows us just how powerful that concept is in media, how hungry everyone was for that voice, for that, that story, for that, that, that sense to be understood. So I just want, I want to say that that's just something that's happening right now. This is a conversation that's happening more than it ever has before. And I'm very proud of that. It's a difficult conversation. Right. And, and, and there are, are, are women colleagues of mine. There are trans colleagues of mine. There are, are, are people of color that are colleagues of mine. And they're suffering because their comment sections are just full of the worst kind of people saying the most horrible crap. But, you know, we are still having those conversations. And we need to keep having those conversations so that the day uh, a, a young uh, trans uh, person sits down at a table, they're just boom, welcome, it doesn't matter. And it's not like a big deal. It's just, here's your character sheet, you're playing same as me. A woman sits down to sit to, to play Dungeons and Dragons and isn't automatically treated like, well, you don't probably, you probably don't know what the rules are. Your boyfriend was probably ignoring you and here you are trying to intrude on in our game, which is still things that are happening today. I'm reading stories about that crap. And, and I'm know, like, it, it sounds like it was written in the 80s. It wasn't. It was written about a convention last week. And That's you know crazy. Stop. You know what's crazy about that is like every time I think, you know, like to me, like sometimes I think people are going to just hear me out, though. Let me finish. I, I think people are, are overreacting. I'm just like, come on. It's not like that. Right. Because I have never personally experienced it or seen it. I've never even seen it. like I, I run games at conventions, never seen it. None of my friends are like that. Right. But then I hear people talking about it. And I'm like. And then I read stuff about it. I'm like, well, shit, this stuff exists, really? I'm like, uh, you know what I mean? I'm just like, I'm kind of like, well, what the hell? Peter, here's the thing. You probably have never allowed that crap at your table. Oh, right? fuck no. Of course not. And I would never allow that at my table. But if we really think hard over the years that we've been involved, we probably have seen it, but we shut it down because that was our nature to do so. Unfortunately, Could we're be. not we're not everyone, right? right. We're not everyone. And and so we have to believe them, and we have to listen, and we have to continue. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Continue being the people saying let's let's keep it inclusive. Let's. But you know, there's 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 a there's a thing that my friend Owl Owls says frequently. Uh, she's she's like, you know what? Everyone keeps talking about inclusivity, but we don't need to include the bad actors. We don't right. need to include the people who are racist, who are bigoted, who are misogynist, who are harassers, who are treating a woman at the table as a dating opportunity. Um, we don't necessarily need to include those folks. And I, that's a challenge. She challenges me on that because you want to just have the most open heart and go, everyone's welcome, but you don't want someone there who's going to make it a bad time for anybody else. It's the same thing as the guy who cheats. You don't want that guy at your table, right? No, right. Well, there you go. So, so Mike, you're out. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> but but my point is you talk about today. Today, more than ever, we're having those conversations and it is valid and vital that we do so. So thanks yeah. for giving me to, to speak on that. Fantastic. All right, hey, let's, yes. let's ramp up. Mike, Mike, you saw Flash Gordon for the first time. Ah, oh. I did. And, and, and I did. You know, Mike, I, I, I'm disappointed in you that, that this was the first time you've seen it. And then, I, then I'm you. Trying, I'm trying so hard not to judge you, but I'm really judging you right now. <laughs> hey, <laughs> right? Seriously. I, I, st I stayed the course, all right? I watched it. Uh. Come on, you got you got you gotta give me something for that. I hung in there. I watched it. I even 
dun, I even dun, made dun, a game dun, 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 of it dun, 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 from yeah. it. <laughs> and uh, all right. So here's what I want to say. Uh, and I, t I text you this, Pete, which I think some of our viewers would appreciate this, that uh, in some ways I am so overly thankful that it was not the room. It was nothing like the room. Oh. It was, in fact, tolerable. OK, and, and I, I put the right glasses on to watch it. I, I knew to expect cheese. It was effervescent, effervescent with cheese. It was overflowing. It was out of my ears and other orifices. There was a lot of cheese in this movie. That's okay, yes. right? Yes. I know that it's 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 uh, I, right. I know, and and I was watching it because I know. Hey, this is my best friend's favorite movie. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it, and you know it was not bad. So don't 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 <laughs> let me don't say that I ever said it was okay. bad. If it had been anybody else doing the soundtrack, you could get away with saying it wasn't bad. But it had the fucking queen best soundtrack of all soundtracks. <laughs> Which makes it awesome. I was expecting more music though from bad. them. I was expecting. Are more you music. kidding? Their music was all through that thing. Well, yeah, it was. It was music. It was like uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, instrumental stuff, and that was but, good. They, but they did all that. They right. yeah. every every bit of music in that movie was was them. them. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it is a Queen album. It is a great album. Yes. That the album itself is fantastic. I listened to it. More than I'd like to right. admit. So, I mean, so, yes, you know, Flash, Flash, I love you, but we only have 14 hours to save the Earth. That's as yeah. cheesy as it gets, but it's right. good cheese. Yeah. I like cheese. Cheese is as addictive as cocaine, so it's, cheese is good. Well, it's as like, cheesy as it gets is... Uh, Save them for our save those stories for our kids. Oh, I accept. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. I like I like the one. Forget it, Ming. Dale's with me. <laughs> go, Flash. Go, Dale. Go, Flash, right. go. And that football scene, dude. I swear okay. to God. I'm, oh God, damn it! Right, that football scene still gives me goosebumps sometimes. It still Brian. does. I, I, here's why you can't say it wasn't bad. You must say it was good. You don't have to say you don't have to say it was the greatest movie ever, but you must say it was at least it was good. And I've got three words for you. And I, you know, I try to keep my language a little under control, but I'm going to say it <laughs> exactly this way: Brian fucking blessed. That is yes. why that movie must be a minimum of good. Flash, Flash Gordon, <laughs> Rocket Hawkman. Yeah. Okay. So, so is it yes. me, or were there certain actors from today that you would think, you know, I could see this actor playing that that one, like the one who played the um the oh God, what am I talking about? The or not the orc, but the um <laughs> the in in Lord of the Rings, you know yeah. the um. You know what I'm talking about? The red, the beard. What are the red bearded dudes? What are they? Oh, oh, you're talking about um, uh, yes. Uh, well, goddamn, I know his name. Um, I can't think of his name either. He played Sala in 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 uh, Indiana Jones. Oh you're, oh, you're talking about um, God, oh, for God's sake. God damn it! It's right here. He was yeah. in Sliders. Um, you're kidding me, Gimli the Dwarf. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, yes, but yes, so, he could play. He could have played Brian Blessed part. Sure. Yeah, he. John he, uh, Rise Davies. Yeah, John Rise Davies. Yep, yep. Yep, the, and the and I could see for it, like but. for me, Dale was totally like Dorothy Gale from The Wizard of Oz. It sounded like she just could have been, <laughs> right? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> All right. So here are a few other notes before we get into the game. Here are a few other notes that I took uh, about watching it. Okay, and for this one thing, I am going. I have to share my screen because I took a screenshot of these things. Uh -oh. Um, okay. like. Uh, quite conceivably, the most uh, – actually, I'm going to say it was good, but, like, like uh, just weird and scary, okay? okay. Oh, yeah, this that, thing. I, no, no, I'm going I'm, 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 to that, – that was the worst costuming ever. That it was. was. The, worst the lizard man. Yeah, it was bad. We, all of us who are Flash fans have all, like, secretly and un, unspokenly agreed we just ignore that. We just pretend yeah. like they did not Didn't do happen. But, Didn't do but it. Well, you know what I'm doing with this? I'm retconning it into something awesome. Like, and I'm like, I'm seeing it through what could it, what it could become. You know well, what I mean? What is weird about that is if you go back and look at the original Flash Gordon car comic strips that were done in the, in the, in the newspapers, which by the way, if you, if you look into the Flash Gordon uh, Savage setting that, that Shane and, and company and Scott Word was a lead writer on that. Uh, they, they actually went in and used the old, you know, archival uh, art, the lizard people, did not look far off from that. They were people, but they had these weird. So actually, that's bizarrely true 
to the original creators you know art yeah. visions like i was like what are those eyes in there there's a face in their mouth <laughs> <laughs> right yeah it's, it's, and then and then i had to send pete this as soon as i saw it right away because that is just i mean yeah. you want to talk about you want to yeah. talk about some cgi that is just blowing me away that's right. not cgi that's pure, i know it wasn't was that. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, that was some gross ass shit right there is what that was, that was yeah like i, like, I told mike mike right. was like Michael's like, oh man, I like that guy. I was like, I was like, nah, you know what? F that guy. He he put boar worms on my beautiful aura, you know, <laughs> so he can yeah. go. I yeah. I look, I contend that she is she is quite possibly one of the most beautiful actresses of of that time. She is. Uh, uh, I follow. I actually follow her on, on Instagram. Um, she's still stunning. Still yeah. stunning. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. All right, so. The other thing was uh, the secrets of the arboreal swamp. There was two out of the three secrets of the fire swamp. Basically, there was the lightning sand, yeah. and then there were these spiders of unusual size. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but there was no uh, flame spurt. But no. uh, let's see what else. Uh, Snake eye people, Dale, do. Oh, and I don't know, dude. What the what was the, with the brown diaper when he, you know, was in the tomb? I mean, come on, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the some of the, most of the costuming choices were bold and amazing. No one had done anything like that ever with the right. colors and the everything. Yes. It was just the most colorful, bizarre everything. Yeah. But then every once in a while, you 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 had a miss. It's like somebody was like, I don't I don't have any good fabric left. What do we got? Oh, throw that over there. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> He's about to some die. trash bags. <laughs> You know, uh, it's like we we blew our budget on the dwarves and the in the uh, gold plated drapes, so yeah. we don't have anything left for for Flash's diaper. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, hey, and, and, and please don't feel like you have to defend this. I'm saying this out of fun because it was it made it enjoyable too. Oh. Um, let's see. Uh, and the I I love the fact that I picked up on this. I don't know if anyone else did the fact that uh, earthquake is generic for seismic activity all over the universe you know yeah, there was some interesting things like why are we all speaking english they didn't even try to explain how that worked not even a little bit yeah. right no not a bit and what is what is hot hail yeah I mean, what is hot what, hail what the, why what you is... a button for hot hail hot <laughs> <hell>. <laughs> oh my god that, yeah you are you're, you're that that one that one to this day it, and it doesn't matter you could be the most hardcore fan and you still look at the hot hail button and go who the hell <laughs> idea with that yeah the only thing i got is clitus was just that sick you know yeah. clitus was just that twisted that he had to come up with his own little special extra disaster called hot hail that's right yeah. All right. All right. Well, so we ready to play the game, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Hold on. Let me. Uh, I'll put you on the game thing. Uh, you let me know when you're ready. Uh, I'm ready. All right. Here we go. All right. Hey, everybody. It is game time with the Mythwits. I'm your game master, Mike Capus, and on this episode, we are going to play Flash Gordon trivia. I will present Sean and Pete with questions about the classic hit 1980 movie. Flash Gordon, not Flesh Gordon, not the Flesh, oh, not the. Oh, yeah, God, different no, movie. I hope not. Ugh. Oh, I think I watched the wrong movie. No, um, <laughs> no you didn't. I promise you. <laughs> All right. So basically, guys, there's going to be two sections uh, in in the game. One game is the not hard questions, um, and uh, I. <laughs> it's so funny. You already made mention to some of the things I I have. So they'll be give some gimmies. Uh, okay. And then some harder questions. Okay. So we'll see. We'll see how you guys do. Not hard questions. Um, the slew of them are worth uh, one point each. And the hard questions will be worth two points each. Uh, and we have a good amount of questions. So I just say we get right into it. What do you say? So right. how, does, how does this work? Do we ding in or buzz in? or do nope. I just nope. to... It's going to be one. It'll be one, um, one Take... question directed toward, toward you. If the other person can't get it, um, Pete, do you want to? I'm fine with it saying that the other person can steal. Nope. Okay. Not a I problem. Steal. It's, it gets okay. too complicated. It gets, yeah, it gets, it's, not it gets, yeah. Okay. All right. Now, I do not have the score thing I'll pulled do it. up. I'll do it. You got it? I got it. I'll, I'll keep score. Okay. All right. Um, here we go. The first, uh, first question, uh, our guest, uh, go, gets first. So, uh, um, bring it. Yes. It's a little, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm pulling, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling the jar off the baby food. All right. I'm just, oh, okay. the lid down. all right, let's go. Let's go. All right. 
Uh, what does Dale do for a living? She is a travel agent. That is correct. Ding. Nice. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, oh, man. Be... Ah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right, Pete, your yes. first easy question is, what does Dr. Zark it's Zarkov, right? Yeah. Hans Zarkov. Hans Zarkov. What does Dr. Zarkov order Munson to pack before his journey to the moon? Oh shit. Uh, what you, what you pack? Oh boy. Uh, I, it, I'm that's looking at That's not an easy question. That's I, not an easy question. You just you just totally dick Pete. Uh, that, 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 <laughs> it's okay. I was told that you guys were were like, you know. Uh, Simpson yeah. level here. Give me a think. Yeah, give me a think here. Give me a think here. Give, hey, Mike, give me a think for a second. Let's see. Hold give on. Let's think. do this. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Uh, uh, his brown diaper. It was diaper. pragmatic. I, the only hint I'll give you is it was pragmatic. I don't know. It's brown diaper. I mean, I, I, I do know the answer, but you know. I don't know it. I got it wrong, so I got a. Pathetic earthlings. <laughs> oh! All right, Sean, what's, what, what's the uh, answer, Sean? Sean? What was it? A toothbrush. A toothbrush. Oh, and he actually said, pack your toothbrush and whatnot. <laughs> and whatnot. Okay. All right. All right, I got Sean. Here's your I'm wrong. One. What color is Ardentian blood? Ooh. Ooh. Ardentian. Ardentian. Uh, I believe it is blue. I will accept blue because depending upon the screen, um, it will uh, look either violet, blue, or purple. So I'll accept that. Ah! I'm not going to do this every time, Mike. No, you don't have to do that <laughs> okay, every time. Okay, no, right, you every absolutely time. have to do that every time. I well, then there you go. <laughs> every time. Every time. If I, get a, okay. if I get an answer right, I want I want Flash. And if I get it wrong, I want to be a pathetic earthling. Okay. All right, fair enough. And it's not fun if you don't do that. Pete? All right. Yes. Oblige our guest. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, Pete. Here, here's your baby food question. As the movie opens, what are the two words that are blinking on the screen? Two words are oh god damn it. Um man, these are not easy. Uh like two. literally this the music stopped and they're starting to, you know, the, the movie has just opened. Two words. Two words. They're they're blinking. Man, John knows it. Actually, I'm, 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 I'm not sure I do. Oh, is wow. it on air? I don't know. I, I have no idea. Go ahead. Was it? Was I it did. what? He said on air. No, it was not no. on air. Close. That's close to those two words. Well, no, nope. it was. Hot hail. God, you both oh, kicked yourself. Oh, God damn it. What, that was, those were the first two words? Oh, it is, right, because he's, he's about to push the, he's about to, yeah, he's pushed the, yeah, so I got. Oh, because they were going through the, yeah, they were going through the different disasters, but that was the one that was blinking. Yeah, That's okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, all right. All damn right. it. Damn hey, it, this I is mean, hard. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I put some work into this. All right. This um, ain't baby food, brother. I, I, I didn't say they were all easy. There's some easy ones and some, uh, they're not hard. Compared That's to the hard, hard ones. All right, oh, here we go. Great. Of course, yeah. watch. You guys will love the hard. You guys will like get all the hard ones too. Watch. All right, here we go. Uh, Sean, what position and for which NFL team did Flash Gordon play? Do you have to get both of them? Yes. Okay. Quarterback, New York Jets. That is yeah, correct. That is correct. Yes. That I knew. Ah! Ah! Sean's killing me. We are making Sean's. Day right now. He's That's killing awesome. me. All right, good. <laughs> okay, here we go. And Peter. Yes. Who was nominated for a Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actor in the movie Flash Gordon? I'm gonna have to say that that it had to have been Sam Jones. That is correct. Yay! I got one right. <laughs> All right, moving on and quickly, Sean. What does Voltan call Flash? When Flash goes to save Bryo by the rocket Ajax. Oh, impetuous boy! That yes. is correct. That is correct. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> 
All, All right. right. Ed Pete. Yes. While draining Dr. Zarkov's mind, who was General Cletus referring to when he said, hmm, now he showed promise. Oh, nice. oh he was talking about Hitler. Yes. Yeah, was. There you go. Because Cletus is there. a bad guy. Yeah, huh? This is a bad guy. Because <laughs> Clytus is a bad guy. Yes. Mike, that Clytus was a bad it's guy. It's a bad dude, man. Come on. I, I loved it. I, you know, my when he died, I kind of, you know, I got a little sad. Oh, jeez. No, he deserved it. That tells us what kind of person you are, Mike. We judge you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, he was, he was my, uh, my, my Darth Vader. Yeah. Oh, God. All right. Come on. Come on. Come okay. On. All right. And uh, uh, who are we at? We're at uh, Sean. Hey. Yes. What sir. color yes. is a Borean blood? What colors are Borean blood? Mm -hmm. Ooh, wait a minute. Are uh, that, that could be a I, trick. That could be a trick question, Mike. No, he beat the crap out of uh, Prince uh, Prince um, Baron, and uh, so Baron was bleeding pretty bad. And I'm pretty sure it's red. Yeah. Mm. See, I don't know if that question is going to work, Mike, because I think you're talking about when they when he gets his his wrist. Yes. Okay, that oh, was the venom. That was, that was yeah, the that, venom from the that tree was that creature. Weird, that was that weird, was there that was, was blood though. There was, a, there, was there, there no the th what you're talking about when he does the picture in his hand. That's green crap coming out of his hand. Yeah. But when he gets the crap beat out of him by Flash on the the floating weird spinning disc, his actual blood is red. Yeah, yeah but so. I'm going to say that that would have been um, you know techno. I don't know. Um, can we skip that one? Because that one's kind of... Uh, That's fine. That's fine. Uh, it's, it's showing the next one. Hold on. I got it right either way, right? Because I, it's green that's coming out of his palm. It is green. So you know what? All right, because so you know what? It, all right, He got that right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I was looking for. Light green. Okay. It, was, it was a green color coming out of his hand. But again, I'm with I'm with Pete. That was more that was the venom coming and, out and, of his hand. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll be flexible on some of the pedantic... Uh, it wasn't, and it wasn't actually his hand. It was specifically his wrist. His wrist. Exactly. Yeah, it was right in his it wrist. Was. Yes. It was. All right. And Pete. Yes. Where? Is Princess Aurora's secret pleasure moon? Ooh. First off, it's Princess Aura, um, and her secret pleasure moon. Oh, sorry, there was an extra. Uh, <laughs> he I loves wanna, the sync music. I want to say you almost need that dink, dink. Yeah, dink. No, right. The countdown clock. Oh, yeah, yeah, the countdown at the end of the. Yeah, yeah. I want to say that that it was um crap. I don't, I don't I don't think this is right but I'm going to say Phrygia. I can't remember. Yes. Nope. Cythera. Oh, Cythera. I think yeah. I, I would have said it was those Phrygia as well. Yeah, I thought nope. so too, but no. Yeah, he Cythera. Oh. All right. Uh, uh, pathetic earthling. <laughs> <laughs> I would have gotten that wrong too, brother. I would have yeah, gotten yeah. that one wrong too. All right. Uh, all right, Sean. So now, what color is Ming's blood? Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that was, um, that was, yeah. that was, uh, God, it was like a blue green, I think. It was, yeah. I will um, take a dark green. I'll take a, a green. It was a, it was a dark yep. turquoise kind of green. Yep. Yeah, okay. I always thought, I, I mean, I would have guessed kind of black because it was so dark. You know what I mean? It was very like, dark, but yeah, it was It was like, a, that's why I said blue-green because it sort of had this yeah. green tint to it, mm -hmm. but it was very dark. Either way, though, <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> and I would just like to point out for that one that when he was impaled by the ship, the ship impales him, no blood, and then he falls off of it and has blood. Yeah. Yep. So, oh, come on. Just, you know. It went through really fast. That ship... Yeah. <laughs> The ship was moving faster than blood, right? Yeah, just faster saying. than the speed of blood. It's faster than the speed of blood. <laughs> yes. The blood only came out when Be when Ming willed it and allowed it to blood himself. Yes. yes. That's true. I Good will point. allow the blood. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, we're at Pete, right? Yes. Yep. What? Pete, what is the standard mile unit in Ming's empire? Oh, that's, that's a Mingo mile, Mike. That's a Mingo that's mile. A, that's Mongo miles. Oh, God damn it, City's Mingo. Sorry. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're right. Oh, damn it. Oh, oh. That's a God damn it, you're right. It's a Mongo mile. All right. Shit. Oh. Oh, 
feeling good. I'm just feeling good as a quiz master. All right, here we go. You're just you're just glad to be back on that side of the screen. Yes, ah. I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, hopefully this is an easy one. We'll see. Sean, what is Dale's last name? Dale oh, Arden. Dale Very Arden. Very good. Come on. That's a, now that's baby food right there. That's the definition of an easy question. You want some baby food? Baby food. What color is General Kayla's blood? What is it with you and the blood? He's all about the blood tonight. There was I a know, lot of right? bleading in the movie. Oh, her, hers, is, hers is definitely black. Hers is nothing but black. There you go. Yep. Yeah, she, I mean, she melts into nothing. Right. Yeah, All right, we only have two more cool. for the easy ones, and we move on to the hard ones. Oh, my God, how many <laughs> questions is this? Not, not, not too many. There's not as many in the hard ones. We're okay, having okay. fun. Yeah, I'm having I, fun. It's fine. Moving okay, on. okay. Here then again, go. I've got a killer score. But anyway. Yes, <laughs> you do. You're crushing me. <laughs> what does Flash tell Voltan to tell Dale if he doesn't make it out of the Ajax ship? Okay. Uh... Tell Dale it would have been great. Yeah. I will accept that. It would have been good. But you know what? You know what? That's fine. Yeah, oh, I'll accept yeah. it. You take it. That must be one hell of a planet you come from. That's um, right. yes. Was that was that one of the hard ones, Mike, or was that still easy? No, that's an easy. Okay, all right. All right. All right, here's the last of the easy. Here we go. Pete. Yeah. All right. What is the primary time standard in the Empire? He has to get another standards question. He's like, shit, Mongo, Mingo, what is it? Right, what is no, it? Right, because it's Mingo <laughs> City. But hold on. Um... <laughs> God damn it. Uh, uh... Um... Yeah, I know. Um, um, uh, Mingo Minute, Mongo Minute, Mong Ming Minute, Mongo Minute. I'm going to say Mongo Minute. Well, it's the standard of time, just like, you know, Greenwich Mean Time or whatever. So are, are you going to basically are you going to go with Mingo or Mongo? Because I know that's what you have to go between. You're going to go right. Mongo. Uh, I'm going to say Mongo. Uh, sorry. Mingo Mean Time. God damn what? it. Son of a bitch. They... That was totally my fault. That was that my was not... fault. Pathetic, uh, no, I, I was guessing. I was just grabbing at straws. I didn't know the answer. <laughs> that that was when they were announcing the um, the uh, what do you call it for the uh, citizens? The. Uh, Yes, execution for Flash. Right, right. And also uh, the, during the wedding. That is correct. So they All mentioned right. it twice. So, yeah. All right, go All ahead. All right, here we, that was pizza. Here we go. Now uh, for Sean. Yeah. Double point score? Yes. Now two points per question. Here we go. What words do the banners display that are flying behind the ships in the background as the wedding begins? Uh, wow, okay. Uh... I remember the last one for sure. Um, I'm just trying to remember what the first one was. Oh, I'm not going to get this exactly right. Um, all hail. Uh, I think I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm talking this through, so I'm not, this is my, not my final answer. I think it's all hail. Yeah. All hail Mongo. All hail Ming the Merciless wedding or something like that. And the last words are upon pain of death. Um, I'm not, that's as, that's as best I'm going to get it. So I feel like you should get one of the two points because it is a okay. two, almost a two part question because it was all creatures will make merry. Uh, upon pain of death. Un yeah. Upon pain of death. Under pain right. of death. We'll give you one point for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I don't I don't know. No, I totally got that wrong. I totally got all that right, wrong. So, all right, so I will find I'm right. waving the points off. I'm waving all right. the points off. All right. no, give, me, give me my pathetic earthling. Give it to me. Alright, hold on. Pathetic earthling. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right, here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Ming has insulted me. I feel better. Uh so Pete. Yes. Where were Dr. Zarkov and Prince Bar Baron? Chained up before Princess Aurora, Aurora, Aura rescues Aurora. them. The pit of despair. No, um, <laughs> different movie. Um, the the the, the dungeon. 
shit, it has a name, doesn't it? Um, yes, it has a designation. Kind of like, uh, you know, Prisoner 4245, why aren't you in your post? Yeah, why aren't you post, right? Um, man, you're killing me with these questions. I have no idea. That, that's a good one. Area 77 Delta. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's, he's definitely, he went all out of making these difficult ones. Hey, a, uh, come on now. Now, no, some these, of them, there, there are some that aren't, but uh, this next one is going to be no, equally as hard. So. There's fair. These are true fans. Yes. All right. So, all right. I mean, it would have been helpful if you guys would have <laughs> watched it right before. No, it would, I would have known that. I would not have known that. Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> Sean, while escaping Area 77 Delta, what was the code to the elevator? Hey, fucking wrong with you because what question it's, is it's that it's nerdy it's nerdy stuff no it's not just it's impossible no it's not that's uh, why they're worth two points don't, so don't, this, get, up, don't get butt hurt this is the scene where he's uh uh it's Zar they're they're zark aura and baron are talking about their relationship exactly. zarkov is like uh holding her wrist and she he's like flinging it around to get the elevator open um he said, "I knew it was something." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, 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 uh, the, uh, I'm going to say the Facetti sequence. Yeah, you're close. No, but one of the prime numbers of the Zeman series. No, nope, got it wrong. Got it wrong. <laughs> I don't even. I'm like, I'm like uh, hey, no, these are these are these are. These are these are legitimate hardcore oh fan God. clubs, yeah. and yeah. we are hey. we are failing to be hardcore fans. I had Jesus. twenty years of Simpsons trivia to sift through when you told me, asked me, like, what was the name of the plane that Krusty the Clown had? Okay, welcome. The only reason I even chose that question was because it was an internet meme. <laughs> like I was, because I was like, is he gonna know this? And there's like, there's a whole meme about it. And I'm like, oh well, hopefully he'll pick it up as a meme. But right, go ahead, go ahead. All right, here we go. Pete. Yes. Don't expect you to get this. <laughs> but maybe you will. Ouch. What time was Flash Gordon scheduled to be executed? 12 midnight Mongo or Mingo <laughs> Greenwich time. 29 15 Mingo Mean time. All right, all right, all right. Which which begs the question like how many solar, you know, hours? Right. How many hours are in a uh, Mingo day? Right, and oh. considering there's no sun that ever sets or rises, or it's always <laughs> <Right>. light. <laughs> All right, now, now, you know, I will say that Sean, you know, you you do seem to have a lot of uh, Gordon Fu, so maybe you will get this one. All right, we shall see. What is Ming's Law, Article Seventeen? Okay, give me a second. Ming's law under under Article Seventeen of Ming's law. Under Article Seventeen of Ming's law, no, um, no ruler shall. Okay, hang on, I'm trying to figure out exactly how to word it. But basically, it comes. It, it's it's uh, Baron uh, invokes that in telling uh, Voltan why he can't just outright kill him. So it's basically there's a, the Article 17 of Ming's Law, you know, one ruler may not be a, a ruler may not be killed by another ruler, or uh, the rulers basically can't kill each other, is what it comes down to. That's the essence of the law. It, it, keep talking it through. There's one other part without first what? Uh, uh without uh, without permission from the emperor, basically. Yes, without permission from the emperor. Is that correct? Hmm. Without first being given the right of trial by combat. Oh, oh right, yeah, right, combat yeah. Part. Uh, okay. Close. Well, that was that was a good one. That was a good one. That's a good one. That was a good one. Okay. I think I do get half credit for that one actually, because it was a law about rulers killing each other. I, I will I'll have. give it to you. I'll give it to you. Fair enough. I get a flit as opposed to a full flash on. Right. That you, you were. You were oh, here we go. Can I do that? Hold on. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Half a <of> one. <laughs> All right, Mike. Okay, uh, just a couple more. Pete. Yes. During the wedding ceremony, the officiant refers to Dale as Ming's what? Uh, concubine. 
Mm, sorry. <laughs> Empress of the Hour. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I do remember that now. Yes. <laughs> and you promise not to blast her into bits? Turn to right. Until such time, until <laughs> such time as you are through with her. Yes. Until, yeah, until you're born yeah. with her. So. I do. I do not. Do not. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, when Zarkov, uh, this is uh, for Sean. Sean. When Zarkov and Prince Baron are chained up at Area 77 Delta, what is written on the wall in between them? Oh, I know, I know, I know, oh, I know this one. Oh, <laughs> this one I know. Yes. Oh, good. Oh, 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 um, because I remember Baron says, Tell me more about this Houdini. Um, but written on the wall, uh, isn't it like Ming sucks or something? <laughs> Ming sucks, that would have been awesome. Yeah. Hey, Mike, hey, Mike, since I'm so far behind, so I don't look like a complete idiot, can I steal? Let him steal, let him steal. Yes. I, I steal. steal. Flash lives! Long live Flash. Or long live Flash, close yeah. enough. Close Give enough. it, give it to him. There we go, yay! Wait a minute, I, hey, I get one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, you, you took this Clytus thing too seriously, and you, you've been like, you've been like, you know, rearranging our minds. About all, right. all right, all right. There's only there's like a uh, two more after this one. Pete. Okay. What is Sam Jones' middle name, uh, i.e., actually his full name at birth? I think J. Yes. Sam J. Jones. I don't know what that, but I'm going to take a guess. I, cause I don't, I've, I've never actually looked into what the J means. Um, I'm going to say James. Interesting story behind the J. It's not real. His actual birth name is Samuel Gerald with a G Jones. Oh, Oh, right. wow. That, that is a good, hard see, that's a, but that is a good, yeah. I deserve this. That's a great question. That I should have known. That was a good question. That was All right, good. here we That's go. That's a good one. Uh, this would be, uh, I believe, Sean's last question, yep. and Pete gets one more. So okay. here we go. Um, okay, so we all know, Sean, that Queen did the music for Flash Gordon, but do you know the label? The label. It's the first word that comes up. It's the first sentence that comes up before the credits roll. It talks about Queen, and they're on what, you know, they're on this label. Just saying. That's why I picked it. I'm going to say I'm gonna say Columbia. Electra Records. Got it. No, oh. No, a total, that's all right. That's all right. Totally, so, Pete, whatever. this is your last chance to get another two points. Earthling. Earthling. This is, this is right. another Sam Jones out of movie question. All right. Oh, goody. Goody. What alias did Sam Jones use when posing nude for Playgirl in 1975? Oh and if you didn't, if you didn't know he posed for Playgirl in 1975, probably, probably more, a little more challenging of a question for you. I didn't know that. Um... However, however, I got this one, Pete. I got this one from a uh, uh, online quiz. So, nah. Uh, Alfred E. Newman. <laughs> Andrew Cooper the Third. Oh God. Andrew, Andrew Cooper the Third. Oh. After Flash ran, Pathetic they reran. They reran the pictures, and he had to fess up to it. Man, man. All right. Well, hey, John. Hold on. Wait. I gotta go here, and then here, and then here. You go. Ready? John is our winner. He beat. He uh, he had nine points. I had five. Almost doubled my score. Good job, Sean. Yeah, I think we both get some credit because uh, Mike was evil. He was just absolutely was, awful to us. Oh, yeah. You were like, it was like I, Mike the Merciless. Now, now, <laughs> come on. The hard questions were worth two points, and there were a few correct answers. Not many. I think I the, begged for half a, half a correct on one of them. But I would like to think that the not hard questions were pretty pretty good I, can, were, can i name, can I, I i i'll tell you my my favorite piece of trivia about about flash gordon that i happen to know what's that so aura's pet right she's pulling around this little person behind her now i don't know if he's really a little person he might just be super short no, because I, he's very he's proportional no, um, he's, it is it's actually a little person i think it's deep, deep i think his name is deepak chopra it, 
uh, it's Deep Roy. <laughs> Deep Roy, oh, Deep Roy is his name. It's a it's, it's odd name. And his character name was Fellini. Now, what's also interesting about Deep Roy is, is that he appears again later in the movie industry several times, but most notably as all of the Oompa Loompas in the, the yep. Chocolate Factory movie with Johnny Depp. Yep. Yep. He was all the Oompa Loompas, yes. So that was uh that that's my little piece of Flash Gordon trivia that I that I know really well, and it was uh, produced by Dino De Laurentiis is one of his uh, pet projects, um, and uh, yeah, so and they made it in in direct competition with Star Wars. So Star Wars came out and then, but you know it's funny, um, when I saw Flash Gordon, I hadn't seen Star Wars yet. I was when I because I was wow. seven when Star Wars came out, and my folks didn't take me to see it. And, you know, and I was only seven, so I didn't like know to like go check movies out. I played outside all the time. Um, so I went and saw Flash Gordon for the first time. It was at a dollar movie store or a dollar movie store, dollar movie theater down in the neighborhood. And it was actually a dollar. And I went and watched it. Uh, I walked down there myself, paid the dollar, watched it. And it was paired with the nude bomb. So it was a double showing. It was Flash Gordon and Get Smarts, the nude bomb. And I watched both of them. And I was so enamored by this, right? Because you remember, I never saw Star Wars. So I haven't seen like a really, like really, um, uh, you know, fantastic uh, science fiction movie yet. Just like a lot of the old black and whites and stuff. And in 2001, I was too young to really un- like get into that. And I was just like, oh my God, it's the greatest thing ever. Right? right. And I stayed and watched it again. I didn't get up from my seat. I stayed and I watched both of them. I was in so much trouble when I got home because I had been gone for like, what was it? Two, four, like almost eight hours. Right. They were like, where the hell have you oh, been? Man. <laughs> yeah. I, I, similar thing for me. I saw Star Wars and then I, I ran out to the, the um, I read, cause my, I knew my parents were going to come pick me up. Uh, and can't remember which, I think it was my mom, but whoever it was, I, I, I said, can I please stay and, and, and keep watching this? Cause it's the most amazing thing ever. And, uh, I watched it two more times that day. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, Pete, are you ready? Are you ready to hear yeah. one of the, it's not a guilty indulgence, but a movie that you would never think holds a, a, a very dear place in my heart that okay. I'm afraid to watch again because of You're worried about it. ruining it. Yes. Okay. Are you ready for this? Sure. Xanadu. Oh, 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 dude. oh no, really? no, no. Do it. Do it. Watch it again. I've watched it. I've watched it multiple times over the years. Is it worth uh, it? So uh, <laughs> the the young male lead, Je- uh, God, whatever, Jeff Beck, I think his name or whatever is, you know, whatever. He's just sort of there. Yeah. Uh, but everything featuring Olivia Newton-John, everything featuring Gene Kelly makes it 10 times worth it. All of those great musical numbers yep. with uh, with the ELO music, mm-hmm. um, you know the the around the world sequence where the three of them go running around uh, in, in the mall just by itself, or the 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 the, the melding of the, the one scene where they meld the 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 nineteen forties style big band with the rock and roll, which is the tubes by the way, the freaking tubes are the band in that. All of those musical numbers, totally freaking worth it absolutely worth it you will not ruin it for yourself I, I may have to watch it again because i've been so afraid i watched it when i was really young and i was so enamored i when pete talks nostalgically i always think xanadu and i'm always afraid to bring it up it's always it's one of my all-time <laughs> favorite movies and, and you know it will always remain dude i, I would watch it with you in a heartbeat it is, all right all right is. thank you sean well see um, see somebody loves me well it's fine i mean I, everybody has their I, guilty I, I pleasures actually, i actually forgive you now for all those horrible questions my- awesome <laughs> No. All right. Hey, Mike, let's wrap this baby up. Sean, thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. It's a good time. Always um, a good time, guys. Always a good time. Excellent. 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 All right. Uh, let me let me do the let me do the thing here. All right, everybody. You have just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Myth Wits. We're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our guests questions. Not a lot of questions, but a lot of banter in the uh, in the chat room tonight. I mean, like we're at 213 comments. That's a new record. Uh, if you miss our live show, you can always catch the encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. Find us on Facebook as Twitter. Uh, I'm sorry. Find us on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits. Check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher or, or listen live or listen at uh, Mythwits.podbean.com. I can't tell. Mike, those questions, you fried my brain. 
do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media uh, to help spread the Mythwits love over the entire planet. And it's got to be this one. I mean, come on, Flash. Wait, wait, hold on. Oh. Yeah, no, right. Uh, where did I put it? I put it here. Flash. All right, one last ah. time. <laughs> Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And don't try to save the universe with it. Make sure to check out Stu187.com for more cool stuff. And join our mailing list. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike. <laughs> dive! Hawkman, dive! <laughs> awesome.